Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I... I tell you what, I had a, just a wonderful holiday weekend. Now, depending on your beliefs, I hope you either found the Afikoman, the Easter egg, or top-secret Ukrainian war plans. <laughs> this morning, just this morning, right? This, the White House held its annual Easter egg roll. It's a tradition going back over a century to when children were invited to search for treats in Chester A. Arthur's mutton chops. <laughs> President Biden kicked off the festivities with uh, beloved holiday character Al Roker. And <laughs> with Al, Biden dropped some hints about 2024. I was just wondering, uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, will you be uh, taking part in the Easter egg rolls uh, after planning on after 2024? Well, I plan on <laughs> at least three or four more Easter egg rolls. At least three or four more. Maybe, maybe, maybe five. Maybe five. <laughs> maybe, maybe six. So, what the hell? Are, I don't you, know. are you saying that uh, you would be uh, taking part in uh, our upcoming election in 2024? Well, I'll either, so I'll, either, that... I'll either roll an egg or you know, being the, the good, you know, the guy who's pushing them out. That's right. That's right, Jack. I got big Easter news. Joe Biden can lay eggs. <laughs> Easy as pie. No, I push him right out the cloaca, okay? <laughs> Serve him up scrambled or sit on him for a while, raise a beautiful flock of little baby Joes. Peep, peep, peep. <laughs> Point is, I am mentally fit to once again run for president of the United States. <laughs> What's going on? Where's Jill? Marco, Jillo. <laughs> but it's not all. <laughs> but it's not all log lawn games and high fructose corn syrup for the executive branch right now. On Thursday, we learned leaked top secret Pentagon documents on the Ukrainian war had suddenly appeared on social media. It's shocking, but not the first time classified battle intel was leaked on social media. Who can forget the 2003 MySpace post? Irma Gerd, Saderm Hussein. Doesn't really hear of Irma Dindies. We still don't know. We still don't know the origin of the leak, but a big clue is that in addition to being posted on Twitter, it showed up on Telegram, a platform with more than half a billion users that is widely available in Russia. Of course, Russia's biggest social media platform is Potato. <laughs> but. Telegram wasn't the first place the documents popped up. They actually first appeared in March on the video game chat platform Discord. As one investigator put it, this stuff was sitting in a Minecraft Discord server for a month and no one noticed. So national secrets were on a video game chat? Turns out the nuclear launch codes were up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, <laughs> BA, start. The feds. The feds are desperately trying to figure out who the leaker is. One, one clue here, these, these leaked pages aren't electronic files, but rather photos of crumpled documents as if they had been hastily folded up and shoved into a pocket before being removed from a secure location. That's it? <laughs> the technology was put in pocket? The movies make stealing national secrets look so much harder. Get ready for the new Tom Cruise thriller, Mission Impossible. Wait, I just shoved it in my pants. <laughs> I just... I just realized I did the last three jokes without my glasses on. I wonder why this job was so hard. So, big time yikes for the executive branch, but if it makes them feel any better, the judiciary is a disaster right now. Case in point, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, <laughs> seen here after the photographer said, let's do a fun one. <laughs> and new reporting reveals that over many decades, Clarence Thomas has secretly accepted luxury trips from a major GOP donor. Wow, I can't believe Clarence Thomas did something inappropriate, said a woolly mammoth reanimated after being frozen in the Siberian permafrost. <laughs> the GOP donor funding all these trips is Texas real estate billionaire Harlan Crow, seen here quietly and firmly reminding himself that it was definitely a deer you hit last night, Harlan. <laughs> oh, God. Whoa, whoa. 
<laughs> Crow's relationship with Justice Thomas was more than just a few voyages on the SS money bags. These luxury trips happened virtually every year for more than two decades, including trips around the world on Crow's super yacht, flying on Crow's G5 jet, and visits to Crow's various estates, including one in the Adirondacks, which has a three-boat garage. Well, yeah, a busy family's got to have three boats. <laughs> What if the kids sleep late and miss the school yacht? <laughs> Thomas, clearly... <laughs> it's all about education. These people love education. Now, uh, Justice Thomas clearly spends a lot of time with Crow because that same resort features an actual painting showing the two smoking cigars with conservative operatives under a statue of a Native American man praying for a flash flood. <laughs> In response to all this, Justice Thomas has explained that this was all just a misunderstanding, saying he was advised by colleagues that, quote, this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends who did not have business before the court was not reportable, adding, now I gotta get back on deck before we lose that golden hour sun, hashtag yacht life, hashtag some like it yachts. <laughs> And Thomas insists these gifts from Crow don't count because of their personal relationship, saying, we have been friends for over 25 years. Okay, but you've been on the Supreme Court for 31 years. <laughs> oh, it's not a bribe, he's my friend. Oh, how'd you guys meet? Uh, he was bribing me. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> So, okay, I'll bite. He's your close personal friend that you know everything about, so I guess it would be really embarrassing to learn that Harlan Crow has a collection of Adolf Hitler artifacts and Nazi memorabilia, including two paintings by Hitler. Ladies, take note, that is a red flag. <laughs> you never want to have to tell your gal pals. So, I finally spent the night at Todd's. Um, it was good, but he's got this really intense gaming setup and two paintings by Hitler. Should I text him back? <laughs> or what do I do? <laughs> Crow also has a display of swastika embossed linens. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes with the Monsters of History fine dining set. <laughs> you get the Nazi napkins, the pole pots and pans, and the Osama bin Ladel. <laughs> and it's... Act now. <laughs> but for all of that, it's not just the judicial branch. The legislative has its share of problems, especially in state legislatures like Tennessee, because after a week of large student-led protests in favor of gun control, the Republican-controlled Tennessee House voted to expel two of the three Democrats who participated in the protest. All right, audience. Let's play a little game. No, no, let's play a little game. I'm gonna show you the three Democrats. You have to guess which two they kicked out. <laughs> let's see, Jimmy, let's put three tenths of a second on the clock. Go. That's right. It's the two black guys. But the GOP says there's nothing racist about this. Explaining uh, the two expelled lawmakers, representatives Justin Jones and Justin J. Pearson, broke the chamber's rules when they led gun reform chants from the House podium with a megaphone, while Representative Gloria Johnson wasn't expelled since she didn't speak into the megaphone. <laughs> and I think we all know that excuse is pure bull horn. Hey. Hey. Now, before his expulsion... I see you. I see you. <laughs> before his expulsion... Representative Jones called out the GOP hypocrisy. For years, one of your colleagues who was an admitted child molester sat in this chamber, no expulsion. We had a former speaker sit in this chamber who is now under federal investigation, no expulsion. We had a member pee in another member's chair in this chamber, no expulsion. That is horrible and unfair, and also, how can you expel him before he tells us more about this pee thing? <laughs> That's... What's going on there? I did not know that. So this is terrible PR for the Tennessee GOP. Uh, <laughs> but at least it's also pointless, because Justin J. Pearson could be reappointed on Wednesday, right? 
and Justin Jones is likely to get his seat back today. In fact, we just learned he's already been reappointed to the same damn seat. First day back. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Brian Cox and 